the Board of Pension changes, many of you know, have been coming. Uh, un it has been a sort of rocky um, launch of these changes, but the COM has spent several months reviewing and discussing and researching the Presbytery's response to the changes to the Board of Pensions. So what I do ask is you hold your questions to the very end, because uh, uh, I know many of you have questions because you've been emailing me and texting me and calling me about them. Uh, hold your questions. Uh, the, for those that are in the room, there's paper on your table, just write your questions down, that kind of thing. And then those of you on Zoom, hold your questions till the end and then put them in the chat um, for that. Next slide. After 40 plus years, the Board of Pensions is making significant changes to the medical and benefits plan of the PCUSA. We will no longer have pastor, the pastor participation plan, which covered the entire family, nor will we have minister's choice, which was for the non-installed pastors and employees of churches. Starting in 2025, there will be three options. The Congregational Pastors Package, which will be required for installed pastors and available for any congregational pastor, including non-installed pastors and certified ruling elders. There'll be the Covenant Package, which any employee working 20 hours or more uh, can will be using. And then the Transitional Pastors Package, which is available to all ministers who are in pastor participation as of 12-31-24. Sonia, go back to the Congregational Pastors Package. Now I'm going to review each package. It, it's just important because as we move forward, um, the Congregational Pastors Package is required for all installed pastors and available to any congregational pastor leader, non-installed or ANCRs, which is different from the past. Um, the pension benefits will be 10% of effective salary, and the medical uh, benefits it will be for member only, uh, and it's a PPO. It is the same PPO that you, we have now, and it will be 16% of effective salary. Then the medical coverage for spouses and or children or family coverage are available for additional fees. For children, and that's if you have one or five children, six children, however you have many, is uh, going to be eight thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars for twenty twenty five. The spouse will be eleven thousand, and the family coverage will be twenty thousand six hundred. And if you add the spouse and the children together, that's less than twenty thousand. But you cannot have children coverage and spouse coverage. It will be family coverage, and. When we asked that question about why the cost was different, uh, we didn't get a very satisfactory answer. So I do really not sure. Next slide. The covenant package is for any employee working 20 hours or more per week. So you can, any employee of the church can have the covenant package. Uh, ministers, and it's also for ministers serving in a congregational setting, um, non-installed. If you're installed, you have to be in the other one. Uh, ministers serving outside the congregational setting uh, can also have this um, coverage. Medical coverage, PPO, um, is going to be in New Jersey is going to be the same as the as they have now, uh, but it will the cost of it will depend on the zip code uh, or region. Um, it's the same PPO as the congregational package. Uh, at this time, we were promised a calculator, uh, online calculator, uh, and at this time, but it, that is not available. Um, it must, uh, so you have to call the Board of Pensions uh, to get the cost, um, and you are in employer, um, uh, your employer representative has to make the call uh, for that. Um, this is similar um, uh, set for the medical coverage of self, spouse, and children 
all those are are that is still that is available also under the covenant package. Next slide. The transitional pastors participation package. The transitional package is available to ministers who are in the present pastor participation as of December 31st, 2024. The traditional package is meant to help ease that tradition, you know, uh, the transition, I mean, uh, from uh, pastor, from the pro what we have in 2024 into 2025. It will last for, it'll be good through 2027. So there'll be three years of transitional package available. Each year, the percent will increase. So for 2025, the percent will be just like you're in pastor participation. It'll cover everybody and everything. And it will be 43%, which includes the medical and the pension. However, if you do not choose the transitional package for 2025, you cannot go back to it in 2026. What the Board of Pensions that just announced just within the last uh, six, seven weeks, all pastors in pastor participation now will automatically be rolled into the transitional package. So that means 43% of effective salary, and that includes the, the benefits. So you will automatically do in that uh, roll into the transitional package if you if your employer representative does nothing uh, to change that it will be automatic. If you want the other packages, you do have to go and make that change, and I'll explain that in a little bit. The other new program that is being offered is the shared ministry program. The shared ministry program encourages congregations through benefit due subsidies to, this is not quite right, to have a covenant to create sustainable pastor positions. So you'll be in a covenant with the Board of Pensions and the Presbytery to create uh, sustainable pastoral positions. So the benefit, this program supports when two or more congregations partner together to provide full-time employment for a minister of word and sacrament in an installed or non-installed position, can be either one, and they sign a covenant with the Board of Pensions. So that for you, if you share a pastor between two congregations or more, you, you get a three-year due subsidy of 50% of the cost of the benefits up to 100,000 per year. And we have quite a few, we have several shared ministry uh, partnerships where two churches share a pastor, but unfortunately it is only for new shared partnerships in 2025. Next slide. All right, now the difference between the transitional pastor's participation and the congregational pastor's package. The cost difference for family coverage between the transitional and congregational package may be slightly lower for the transitional package for 2025 um, or minimally higher depending on your effective salary. And there is a uh, dues calculator or decision maker, I forget what they call it now, online to help you determine that. But for most pastor, um, if you're like under 78 or 79, thousand dollars it's not it's actually a little bit less to stay in the transitional package than going to the congregational package and this is for family coverage we're talking family coverage um for 2025 but remember 2026 it's going to go up even more so it will be different um the break even coverage for family coverage between the congregational package and the transitional package is around 113,000 effective salary. So if you make over 113,000 effective salary, the congregational pastor package is more cost effective. Again, family coverage. For those clergy who are not installed and in serving a congregation, they can opt for the congregational package the covenant package or the transitional package. So there's three options for non-installed and uh, pastors. 
and the covenant package is available for uh, employees. The covenant package is based on is based on your cost. And at this time, as I said earlier, there is no online calculator to determine the cost for an individual spouse, children, and or family coverage. So the employer representative must call and speak to a board pensions representative to determine the cost. And you have between August 29th and October 4th to do that. That is the employer time for that. So the COM recommendations and requirements for 2025 is which many of you have been calling me and asking me about this. When is this gonna happen? Next slide. The, the following have been, have always been the Presbytery's requirements uh, for uh, uh, Board of Pensions. And these, these are the requirements moving forward. So these we've always had this, and then we'll, I'll explain more. Uh, the Board of Pensions benefits um, and medical benefits coverage is required of all installed pastors, that whether they're part-time or full-time, that is required by the Book of Order. Uh, the Board of Pensions benefits is required of all non-installed pastors working more than 20 hours. This is our policy and has always been our policy, meaning that the death and disability pension and the availability for the optional benefit and, and availability for the optional benefits, uh, such as vision, dental, et cetera, that is available. The Board of Pensions Medical is required of all non-installed pastors working more than 20 hours unless they can demonstrate that they have insurance from another source, example, you know, the spouse or your spouse or some other uh, um, option. The pastor is required to provide annual proof of medical coverage with their annual terms of call. So that is the requirements. Now let's have an explanation of these requirements. Um, now remember, uh, the, the following is how the COM, the requirements for the medical, uh, for pensions and medical will look for 2025. Um, this is for 2025 only. Uh, there are so many different factors that are going on right now with the Board of Pensions and other presbyteries. We cannot say this will remain the same for 2026. Some of it is we just have to see how it's going to continue to roll out. We will reevaluate for 2026. But right now, this is what it is for 2025 only. All pastors, uh, CREs, serving 20 hours or more shall have the Board of Pensions benefits. This is the 10% of the effective salary, which includes uh, pension, death and disability, temporary disability. This also includes members having caught uh, at the member's cost, access to dental, death benefits, visions, and 403Bs. And the exception will be a retired pastor serving a congregation, uh, though we do encourage um, a session to contribute to the retired pastor's 403B. A retired pastor comes under a different category. Next one. Um, Board of Pensions medical coverage. Now, this is for family coverage. Sessions and congregations are required for 2025 to provide for installed pastors family coverage if needed through either the congregational pastors package or the transitional pastors package. All sessions and congregations are required for 2025 to provide family coverage for non-installed pastors if needed through the Congregational Pastors Package, the Transitional Package, or the Covenant Package. Exceptions, and keep hearing that word, exceptions. Exceptions will be made for those who are clergy couples that need family coverage or, situa or situations where the spouse presently also has employer-provided insurance, which we mean non-contributory, that covers the family. And I'll get back to that. Next one, spouse coverage. It is the same here. Spouse coverage is um, for 25, 2025 is, is to be provided for installed pastors if needed 
either through the congregational package or the transitional package. Sessions and congregations are required for 2025 to provide spouse coverage for non-installed pastors if needed through, again, congregational package, transitional package, or the covenant package. Exceptions will be made for where the spouse already has employer provided insurance coverage. Should the spouse no longer have insurance coverage, the church will be required to, to provide it. Now we go to the children's coverage. Um, again, this is for how many, it's, it's the same cost for one child or five children, however many you have. The session are required to provide it uh, in, uh, installed for installed pastor children coverage if needed through congregational or transitional pastors package. Same with non-installed if needed through those three packages, congregational transition or covenant. Exceptions will be made for those where the children are in, covered by the other parents' uh, employer provided insurance. Should the children no longer have insurance, the church will be required to provide it. Now, I keep coming back to exceptions. Exceptions, um, how to get an exception. We know there is no possible way for the COM to cover every situation that you all have. We just that was actually just kind of blowing our minds. How do we do that? So we decided to say, we will provide exceptions. Um, the Committee on Ministry has several members who have been trained in the 2025 benefits plan, and they are available to work with the pastor in session or the personnel committee to work out what is the best options for your situation. Um, they are available. Um, whether you are, need an exception or not, if you just need to have someone to talk to about, say, how is this going to work for us? Uh, they're available to help you and help you walk through the process, whether you need an exception or not. But if you need an exception, you must meet with one of the COM team, um, this, of this team. Uh, you can meet with them uh, by phone, in person, or by Zoom. You can't do it by email, but you know you, any of those will work. They are authorized to provide the exception on the spot. You don't have to wait for another COM meeting, that kind of thing. Um, uh, so after you meet with them, the team will then inst instruct you on how to include that exception into your annual terms of call. So you contact the team person, you work out what needs, what is best for your situation. And if the pastor and the session both agree to that, you can get the exception. Um, and then they will instruct you of what you will need to do because it must be recorded with the annual terms of call. Um, we will have an email uh, ready, I'm hoping by Thursday, that will be sent to pastors and clerks and anybody we have identified as your treasurer or your, your board of pensions uh, representative, uh, they will get that email um, and it, it will, will explain all this and have the names of the people that you can contact and how you can get answers to your questions. Um, and there will also be links to the board of pensions information, that kind of thing. That will be coming out in a few days uh, for you because we know we are in the employer uh, time where you have to make your uh, decisions. Um, there are uh, one other thing, next question, the next slide. Board of Pensions uh, retired pastors serving less than 20 hours per week are exempt from the Board of Pensions requirements. That's just always been that way. But retired pastors serving more than 20 hours a week are exempt from the Board of Pensions requirements but the church is required, still required to pay 12% post-retirement service dues. That has not changed in all this stuff. But we, and we recommend that the church add to the retired pastors 403B. Um, so that is our coverage. We know that there are, you know, creative things happening. Um, I do have permission to share this. Um, uh, uh, Mary Beth at Old Greenwich, her husband, 
is a pastor in another presbytery in another church. And between the two churches, they have worked out which one will pay the family, you know, the children's coverage and which one's going to pay this. And they have come up with a, a creative way of how they are between the two churches are sharing the cost. So that is an exception that she's already talked to me about that. Um, and that'll be included in Mary Beth's terms of call. Uh, so if you have other um, issues, you know, or other concerns, and you can talk to one, someone on the team to help figure out what is going to work best for you.